welcome to the MMA Fan Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Stu and Blake. What's going on, boy? <laughs> How's it going? How's it doing? Really good, mate. mate really yeah, good. It's... You're good? What's happening? Yeah, you, all good, You mate. seem all like good, you're boys. in a great all mood. Good. What have you been yeah, up to? Mate, you, yeah, you... Go on. No, I was just saying, you seem like you're in a great mood. What have you been up to? Oh, mate, I, I this uh, it's my second to last day at this job I've got in a school now. So I just, this dad, I ran this morning. Every day is a good day when the fight's this close, mate, really. I'm just kind of in a happy mood. The weight cut's smooth. Uh, I'm not struggling for anything. Life's good, mate. Yeah, I guess, I guess I'm in a, yeah, I must be in a good mood if you're saying that. <laughs> yeah, no, so what, I mean, what, you, you're working in a school at the moment. What are you doing in the school? Yeah, I'm, I, how do you put this? Like, when the, did you have isolation in your school when you were there? Isolation? Like, you, if you're really naughty in the school, you get, like, put into this, you get ex- internally excluded. So and you're I'm, still like, there, I, like, man. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, but, yeah, I'm here now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, all the kids have gone, all the kids have gone, and I'm, I'm just doing this now, yeah. yeah. What, you had 10 years like, in isolation? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was either that or do this in the car, but I thought I'd just pick this quiet little room, but do yeah. not disturb on the door. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. So what do you do? You monitor the kids when they're in isolation or something? Yeah, it's it's like an admin job, a bit of paperwork. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not so lucky. I can't, I can't um, train full time. Like, like I've, I still train full time, but I still have to have a job um, to pay my bills. I don't live uh, with my parents, so yeah, I, I just got to keep taking, especially with. The time off I've had um, in the last two years, I just, this job now. But it's funny you say this because this is my, I, tomorrow's my last day. So, yeah, it's mad. It's mad well, you're, you're doing you're, this interview while I'm here. You're finishing the job, what, completely? Or are you just stopping it while you've got uh, the fight coming nah, up I'm for a few weeks? It. I'm I'm stopping it. Do you know what you're going on? Like, are you, have you got something you're going on to? Or is it just your full-time yeah, fighter I'm, after this? Well, I'm, it's it's going to feel like full-time, but I'm going to work in Nando's as well. I've worked there for like three years all together in my life, so I'll work there until until I can take off. And, do you know what I mean? Because obviously, uh, early on in your MMA career, you're not getting yeah. wedge chucked at you. And when you've got bills to pay, um, you, you've got to just, you got to make ends meet, mate. So I've, I've, yeah. I've, I've had two jobs for the last um, maybe three or four months. Then I'm just quitting one, and then I'll I'll work in Nando's for however long it takes until I can get like a more lucrative contract. You know what I mean? Yeah, I tell you what, I wouldn't mind getting paid in Nando's if they, you yeah. know, if you get yeah. if you get a discount on the food, I'd be quite happy with that. Mate, I live on the stuff. I in, yeah. when I was in uni, I lived on the stuff. Literally lived on it. I just I I'd, I'd turn up at, at ten o'clock and, and have the the waste chicken as well. I lived on it. <laughs> <laughs> the waste chicken. That's yeah, mate. That's... Times are tough, mate. Times are... <laughs> when, when you're ga- when you're a gangster like me, not everything comes on in, in a silver spoon. You you got you got to make ends meet at some at somehow. So since I was eighteen, I've, I've I've been you know hustling like this, I guess. Oh, I tell you yeah. what, I know you're the Welsh gangster, but I think Waste Chicken could be a great nickname as well. <laughs> waste Chicken, yeah, mate. Back in hell. I'm the I'm the Waste Bin. I cl- I'll clean up down there, mate. <laughs> well, well, Norman, uh, go on, Stu. We, 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 we're going to obviously um, uh, I'll ask you about, you know, your, your whole life really leading up to, to where you're at. But ju- ju- just give us a sort of snapshot of, of how the last few days have been and, t- and tell us a little bit about what it's like in the gym at the moment because spirits must be higher there, you know, with, with, with yourself. Okay, I'm, so- I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've just, I've just been told off by the lady who works in the school. You've been put in isolation. Well, she just said, "Sir, can you stop shouting? I can hear every word you say in reception." <laughs> Boys, <laughs> um, is there any way we? Is this like live? It's oh. not. It's not live. But uh, why do you need to move? I think I'm gonna have to move because she was fucking annoyed then. <laughs> so. Um, well, I, I'm sure we. I mean, I'm sure we can pause it if if you want. I don't know. Like, how can we do that, Stu, with the video? All I'm concerned about is the fact that you've just 
you've literally just been shouting that you're a fucking gangster and then you've just been told off by the receptionist and now you've got to move. I know. <laughs> I'm leaving tomorrow, boys. It is what it is. I, I, she's, added, she's added in for me from day one. It is what it is. Well, we could, we, could, we could definitely just like edit this bit out now, mate, if you want to go and move Yeah, yeah, else. yeah. Right, let me... Um, how am I going to fucking do this? Fuck's sake. Go. <laughs> oh. No, no, no. You gotta go. Go. Right. Um, yeah, you'll have to edit this bit out, boys. Oh, man. It's all right. Don't the worry about it. Not the third one. Fucking hell, man. Proper gangster. I'll tell you what, boys, though, we're definitely keeping all that other stuff in, though, because that was the goal. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to go full gangster on, in, in a fucking school. Do you know what I mean? But I ain't got much Oops. choice here. Yeah, Oban Elliott was uh, removed from the card because he had a fight with a receptionist in <laughs> isolation. Yeah, in isolation. Straight on the way out online. <laughs> you know what, boys? I'm going to stay in here, but I might just have to keep my voice down until she dips. That's all right, mate. That's all right. Um, right. Well, uh, we're all good. We're all good. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, perfect. we can. So to begin yeah. with, then, as as Stu was saying. Where did you grow up? And, and was it a place that you felt like you, you needed to be tough? Yeah, um, right. If I, because I, I grew up, I, I was in Merthyr when from a small kid, but then I moved to England when I was seven. And no, you, you didn't really need to be tough. No, it, it, were, it weren't. Um, growing up, was, it, was, it, was a, it, was a, it was a tough one because. I'd I'd had a lot of, I'd had tragedy early on in my life, so I didn't know if I needed to be tough. I needed I needed a way to channel my frustrations at life that I had from a very early age. You know what I mean? So, um, you, well, you didn't I, really I, need to be tough. I don't know if you mind talking about it or not. Well, I've heard you talk about it on other interviews no, and stuff. No, but of course, of um, course. when you talk about that tragedy, I know your your dad sadly passed away when you were yeah. very young, didn't he? Um, yeah. How was it dealing with that at such an early age, and, and how much did that influence your career choice into, into going into mixed martial arts? It's it it, it well passed away i mean I'll, I'll i'll happily discuss it um he took his own life my dad i don't know if you if you, if you knew that so yeah. it was it, it massively influenced my dedication because even today um if, if i can give an example uh like running like this again i always think this sounds corny maybe maybe i'm a bit too humble when i talk about this but um uh in the last hard mile of a run, for example, I put on a song. There's one of his, and it'll push me, push me on, on to finishing it. You know what I mean? So, it 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 massively influenced me in terms of of dedicating my life to it. And I always found, like from a young age, that uh, that my, this any success I can achieve in fighting will kind of not replace him, but it will help fill a void that I'll always have. And it definitely works for me. But, other people could t- follow suit because I'm not I'm not some superhuman who's who's just magically got this power to overcome tragedy. Everybody goes through it, but it's um, MMA or fighting sports in general definitely have helped me to to, to kind of distract myself from it. And you, you, any you just I don't know I've, I've just spoken about it before. I kind of got a bit of an edge mentally in them rough sessions on them rough days because it, it reminds me of why I do it, you know? Yeah, I don't think that's corny at all, mate. I think that's actually quite a, yeah. a beautiful thing and I, I mean that sincerely. Um, so how, how did you find yourself in in the world of combat sports? Where, 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 where did that begin? Right, so this is... Um, when I, I was growing up, as I said, um, in, in Wales... Um, from from what I can remember as a young proper young kid, it, I was always going for to, to different fighting sports. So like it was always like I went to judo. I think I went to boxing. Um, uh, what was the question again? Sorry, I I, I just lost just how, how, how how you sort of got yourself involved in a world of combat sports? Like where yeah yeah in? into into the world. So basically, yeah, I was being taken to these classes that I didn't really ever want to do. But then when my dad died me and my brother and my mother it was my mother's um orders kind of as well as 
our uh, inf- mine and my brother's enthusiasm went up for it because we knew that if there was one thing he wanted his uh, his two young boys to do is was would to keep up uh, his influence on, on on fighting. So that's that's kind of how I got into it because I knew that he always he that's what he would have wanted. There's there, there's no, nothing else he would have wanted me to do really. I'm sure he wanted it, he wouldn't have minded, but it, it's definitely a, a big motivation. He, he was just fighting went synonymously with my father, whether it was in the street, whether it was in the ring. Uh, that's just that's just he's remembered for a lot of other things, but he's also remembered for being a, a tough cunt. You know what I mean? Excuse my language. No, it's, you can swear on here as much as you like, mate. Um, as long as you do it, yeah, yeah, like low. Because I don't want the isolation. receptionist come banging yeah. the door down again. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Um, do you, do you think that you look at life a little bit differently to most people? I mean, you, you, you've you seen how fragile life can be from such an early age. Do you think you have a higher appreciation for life than, than maybe a lot of other people do? Yeah, but then I also do have that. Uh, I have exactly what you just said, but I also do get that, like, fuck life at the same time some days. Yeah. But then that... <laughs> The, the tragedy of being through kind of re- gives me a bit of a reality check. Like I'll be, um, there's a quote I found once, grateful, um, the key to be humble is to be grateful. So every time I'm like, kick, like I might be having a bad day. I don't see it as like feeling sorry for myself. I see it as like, um, I'm not being grateful for what I do have. And it kind of, it, it, it changes my, outlook on it like for example as I say I've got two jobs there's some days where I'm I feel like head the steering wheel driving here yeah? I've had five hours sleep to get my morning running then I've got to do full day's work and then I've got to go and train with a lot of killers on the evening and I'm like why have I got to do this but then I sit down I'm like well hang on be grateful you can drive be grateful you're as good as you are be grateful you've got the dedication to get up early in the morning to do that run um and then there's other times like on Father's Day like fuck's sake why why is my dad died um and then I could be like, I could be like, uh, be grateful that the the man you've become despite losing him. So it just, yeah. I always trying to, I look at life in like a, it's like a double edged sword in situations like that. But it's definitely, I'm a, I am grateful. I'm very grateful for it. And the, um, yeah, it's one of them. The whole suicide awareness thing coming is like mainstream social media and that. I don't know that I'm really grateful for that, but at the same time, I, I sit there and think, where the fuck was that in 2005? Yeah. And also in um, yeah. beyond, further past that, you know? Mm. So it's just one of them things. I'm not trying to be morbid about this. I'm comfortable no. talking about it. I guess I've never spoke to you gents before, and it's a big topic. It's a big part of my story, and, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, 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 firstly, for you to be so open in these interviews, it's not only... I think a, a, a lovely thing for you to just be open and kind of, you know, we hear about it at the moment, in touch with your feelings. When we talk about MMA and, and combat sports and stuff, when people use phrases like in touch with your feelings or something like that, 10 years ago, people would have taken the piss out of you for saying something like that. But I think we've seen mm-hmm. development socially where people know, no, that, that I think that's genuinely a positive, really good thing. But I think it's also really great. And, and you may not want this, but by being open about this kind of stuff, there will be people in the world, possibly some even to listen into this podcast now that mm. have been through a similar thing and they can look mm. at the way you're dealing with it and look at the, the things you're putting in place, that talking about that, that double-edged sword. It's not all easy. You're not just like, Oh, but I'm yeah. grateful for yeah. this. There are days where you're like, fuck this. This is shit. But Fucking right. Hearing, hearing someone talk about that, especially someone that comes from the world of combat sports. A lot of people put up on a pedestal as like some of the, the toughest people going and all that stuff. But to hear people talk yeah. openly about that stuff, I think is truly inspiring. And I think ultimately very, very oh, helpful for people. And, and you, you are becoming, I think, a, the, the, the more success you have and the more you talk about that stuff, I think the more people you personally can help and the more of a role model you can become for people. I don't know whether that's something you're, you're looking to do, be a role model or whatever that, but, but it, will, it will come. Because you're Mate, being yeah, open and honest yeah. about that stuff. Mate, that, that's, that's, um, that's truly, that's humbling what you've said to me there, mate. I really appreciate you saying that. Because um, I feel like 
as you said, with, with fighters and, and you might get bad days and good days. I, d- I don't know if, if my, hopefully my uh, career and my attitudes may inspire people when it's all said and done or maybe a few more, a few years in, a few more years in. But um, I definitely have a, I don't know if I have an acquired taste on this attitude, but my attitude very much is like, you are owed nothing. You, you aren't owed a, a single thing. And I, I remind myself that and I, I've been through ups and downs in life and I've had my ups and downs like Mike this is this is something that I've spoke about I've never discussed this what I'm about to say now on a to anybody it's only something I've spoke to with, with uh close friends when it's popped into my head but my life was mad ups and downs mad ups and downs mad ups and downs um outside of fighting but my fighting career was very much up 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 and it didn't really make any sense because I was so used to battling and up and a down all the time. When my fighting career was just up, 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 up. There was there wasn't a question how I would deal with it if things went a little bit wrong, but there was always that um there was always that 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 unknown. I didn't know I'd always said like I'd lot I'd lost and, and and dealt with things bigger than fighting will ever throw at me. But uh I can say ups and downs in life, they make you, and, uh, and ups and downs in the fight game, they definitely make you, because this time last year, I could have never have imagined being a fighter I am now, sitting here talking to you. I could have never imagined it. Having this, this, this mindset and these skills, these abilities, I feel gifted. It's completely gifted and grateful. Every time grateful. So, uh, I, f- I think people, people may be inspired by that, because they'll realise... Fucking hell. They might be looking at some Instagram followers or some fighters driving a nicer car than them or might get jealous or whatever. I don't give a bollocks about any of it. I just care about me and the and and the journey I'm on. And maybe other people should do the same. Maybe we'll get a few a few more real fighters like myself. So I feel like I'm 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 representing a, the last of a dying breed. There's a load of fucking pretenders about me. And and They'll jump on podcasts, giving it this, giving it that. But uh, when the boys in the lock, when you walk in a locker room, all the boys know who the real ones are, and all the pretenders are sat in the corner. It's very apparent. Yeah, I mean, talking about the 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 the, the, the gym, um, I imagine the uh, the spirit at the moment um, with, with with Jack and Brett and yourself, like spirits must be good in the gym. Yeah, mate, definitely. Um, spirits are good. The banter's always flying. Everyone's ripping the shit out of each other every time you walk in there. But uh, it's yeah, the spirit, the spirit is is on an all time high, mate. We we we're all flying. Well, I say we're all flying. Uh, just I'm trying to results to me and to results to us don't mean much as long as we put the hard yards in day in day out together. And, and we go out and perform to the best of our abilities. We're always back in that gym on the Monday on a high. So we're flying regardless. Um, it's kind for you to even put me in the same name as, as Jack and Brett, obviously. Well, Tank and Brett. I struggle to say Jack. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, we're flying. We're flying. It's, it's, I can't wait to just add a bit more momentum to... to to what the boys have done before me, like Brett and Tank leading the way, Marshman obviously leading the way before them as well. So I'm looking forward to adding it because I got a lot of hype. People people talk about me, but I'm still angry. I've only had five pro fights, and <laughs> but it we're all let's be grateful. I've even had five. That's what we were saying. And that last one was an absolute cracker, mate. An absolute cracker, and. You know, just just looking at uh, you know another part of the story, you know, it, it, you know that that meant that that fight at one point might, may never have happened, and and just kind of want to sort of touch on you know for people that don't know your story, you know, you was diagnosed with a, a a pretty rare heart issue, right? Yeah, mate, that was a bloody ball ache. I tell you that now, that was a ball ache. Um, that fight when when it unfolded the way it did, I still haven't really got uh it has of course it's sunk in but uh, mate it was mad of course i've had i had them issues with the, with the heart arrhythmia no it was such a strange confusing situation i didn't know how i was ever going to return would i ever be the same there was such a mental block 
uh, the, the, I, 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 so it was out of my hands. I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know if it was a mental thing. It was a physical thing until it happened. And then I found out for myself what, what was, what had really happened, really, what I'd, I'd gone on and what was wrong with me. That last fight is, I appreciate you saying, um, how good it was, but I, I, I can do better and I will, I will do better. I believe I'm not, I'm not being, um, I'm not trying to sound like a brat about it, but there's more to offer. McManus mm. is a, is a fantastic opponent. Um, I consider myself lucky to have finished him as quickly as I did because he's so, so good. There's no such thing as a lucky punch, I guess, but I definitely set everything up, but I'm lucky to, I, I thought I was going to be a three round war. Like I do all my fights, you know? Yeah. I mean, in terms of the heart arrhythmia, you had about a year off whilst you were kind of waiting for like like tests and different things and stuff mm. like that. How difficult was it mentally to keep to keep the faith that you were still gonna keep going in this pursuit of of, of you know becoming a champion? I, I guess and greatness, pursuing greatness, absolutely. How how difficult was it to keep that when you're so young and you're thinking to yourself? this dream might have been taken away from me. It was the, it is 100% in the last 10 since, again, how do I say this in a, without sounding too dramatic? It was very, very, very difficult. I did, it was one of them things where I was like, I was never giving up, but keeping hold of that faith while having to forgive myself for the things that had happened uh, was at one point uh, there was days I thought it was impossible. There when you say forgive I yourself, what did you what do you mean forgive yourself? Did you did you blame yourself in any way for it? Yeah, big time, big time. In what way? Big time. It was it, because um, it was me pursuing greatness. I, I feel I got greedy along the way. And I guess you, you're probably thinking now, how can someone be say, I like, I refuse to look at it like some kind of um, sub story ailment. I refuse to look at it like that. I wanted to see what I could have done differently the whole time. And I feel like I was greedy thinking I could, I could just totally abuse my body, cut into 155. I was greedy to, to, to want to pursue having because I wanted to do this thing where I get a one about 155 in whatever year, then I get a 170 belt. And then as I get older and bigger again, I get a 185 belt. I'm not trying to beat records, but look what Canelo's doing. Mm. I wanted to do that. I wanted to do that. It's the next best thing other than being the heavyweight champion, isn't it? Like Manny Pacquiao did it in boxing. So I wanted to do that. And I guess I was greedy. I ignored all signs of ill health. Every time I was trying to get down to 70 kilos because I was just chasing, chasing glory and greatness. But the one thing I've learned in, in my um, adversity is you've got to just let greatness come to you. You've got to put the things in place where it comes to you. So that's where I've, I had to forgive myself. It is what it is. I, I got heart arrhythmia problems. I cut, I cut a crazy amount of weight and went into a fight feeling fucking horrendous lost my O, got, uh, got diagnosed uh, a couple of weeks later, and then I'm just sat on the sidelines, and I'm like, oh, my God, you know? And it was crazy because I went for a rib. I, I had a bad rib going into the fight, and I was like, I'm not getting an X-ray on this rib. I don't want to know if it's broken or not because if I know it's broken, then that might mess with my head going into the fight. I'm just going to go in a fight. Um, but if I'd have gone for an X-ray before, they'd have – done an ECG before they do an x-ray and the heart rhythm would have been picked up before that fight and this whole shit storm wouldn't have happened. So then i got to forgive myself for that as well. It's just overthinking and you talk, that battle in your head where you're just um, thinking like, what could have been? What if? But now I just look forward and I'm grateful to have got through it all because now I feel like I couldn't be this person who I am today without all of that. The same way I couldn't be the same human being I am today if I hadn't lost my dad uh, nearly 17 years ago that's my outlook on things I try and take a bit of power from everything no matter how much it, it fucking hurts they say growth hurts doesn't it it's growing pains um, yeah that's how it, that's what I mean by forgiving myself for that I guess yeah you know no, I mean yeah, I, I, 
it feels like really powerful stuff that you're saying. I mean, it, it kind of like uh, the, the last thing I'd, I'd want to hear from someone is that they're in any way blaming themselves for something that's completely, mm. you know, in, in a lot of ways out, out of their control or, or not that they would have, they would have known, but it's, it's good to hear that you have got to that stage of like, not that I think you needed to, to forgive yourself for anything, but the fact that you are yeah. forgiving yourself and, and letting yourself off the hook or I mean, yeah, maybe yeah, even yeah. that's the wrong phrase, but I, I think that's all positive stuff mentally. Going it's all forward, perspective. All of that. It's all yeah. perspective because where's the, where is the productivity in saying, Oh, why did that happen? Why did this have to happen to me? The same way I could have sat there 17 years ago and say, why did I, why did I, and I could just be, I could just sit there and, and, and cry myself to sleep over the fact that I've lost my dad. And I, you know, of course you get them, they, I, I miss him dearly every, every second of the fucking day, but I could sit there and, and, and be not negative about it, but be, I don't know, feel sorry for myself, I guess. Or I could just take, I think, right. I've got about 90 years on this planet. Let's just crush this up in a fucking ball and bolt in that direction instead. And go and become a fucking UFC champion. That's how I see it. So bollocks Absolutely. to it all. Bring it on. That's how I see it. Bring it on. Well, one of the, the things that um, we was told to ask you about was something that you you was clear to bring <laughs> on. Uh, and, and we've been asked by uh, our friend Kieran at Cage Warriors to um, ask you um, about the time he had to tell you that you wasn't allowed to do a flying elbow off the top of a cage for a social <laughs> media video. <laughs> What's the story there? Yeah. What did he say? Now he said something like WWE, and I said, "Oh, what if we do like a t if I do if I jump off the top rope like an elbow drop kind of thing?" Dead serious, and he's like, "Nah, yeah, maybe not that kind of thing." I'm like, "Oh, never mind." I didn't really know him at the time either, so he probably thought, "Mate, this kid is off his nut." But yeah, that's uh. So yeah, that was that was that. just a joke because the way he pitched it to us was like this guy wanted to do a macho man Randy no, Savage I... elbow drop. <laughs> no, I genuinely would have done it. I hurt <laughs> my I hurt my tailbone. <laughs> I hurt my like tailbone doing the um the, the <laughs> Hulk Hogan leg drop at house parties, God knows how many times over the last <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> putting pillows out like oh, I stay there doing all this I, like, I don't know if you noticed on my last fight I was doing this doing the doing the, the, the pose oh, that, he, yeah. that he always did I just try and have a bit of fun with it I don't know I love all of it I, wrestling I'm a wrestling guy it's weird I'm like a wrestling guy then a boxing guy and I've become an MMA guy weird yeah are you a big fan of all like the, the WWE stuff then do you watch that yeah, massive fan, mate. Not these yeah. days. I I try my best to stick with it, like. Um, but it's nothing like it was, is it? Let's be fair. No. It's nothing well, I, like it I used to love it. I, well, me and me and my little brother got banned from watching it on multiple occasions because we would always be like fighting each other, doing wrestling moves, and then one of us yeah. would get hurt or whatever it was. I remember it was like my mum and dad would leave the house and we'd go upstairs, get our mattress from like our bunk beds, bring them down the stairs. Yeah, like yeah. And, land there. and this is in the days of like Stone Cold and Shawn Michaels and The Rock and, and, and all that yeah, kind of stuff. And yeah, yeah. yeah, there was a lot of, uh, a lot of unnecessary injuries happened. To be fair, I'm well, surprised we didn't get more injured. Well, me and my 25 year old brother, we still do it now. <laughs> 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 we still do it now. <laughs> Selling the punches, the Ric Flair, the chops, and a lot, mate. I don't know. I never grow up. I don't. Oh. I never grow up. Oh man! I, 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 it, well, Wayne, one of these days, I'd love to. I, I, of course, I respect every man I fight, but I'm. I've got to one day pull my opponent to the side and say, right, we're gonna do a bit of a bit of a work here, like a wrestling thing. <laughs> do, you know, do you know what I mean? Not in the fight, obviously, but. To, to just as a bit of fun, maybe maybe they won't be into it, but I definitely will be. Would you want to do it if you became yeah. a UFC champion? Maybe the WWE would want to sign you up, mate. One million percent, I'm going to be twice. I, I, I'd, I'd get in, I'd have a, have a uh, match at WrestleMania, hundred percent. I'd even have a match on Raw, hundred percent. Any or any of the shows, yeah, love it. Well, I mean, put put that career on hold for a sec because uh, you got a fight coming up. And, uh, of course. And what can we expect from you there, mate? Mate, it's look. We got the Latvian Express, haven't we? He's a, he's six foot, six foot two, one seventy pounds. Um, 
Walk on me. I can't give a prediction. I'll just be. I'll just be busy. Just lighting him up. That's what I feel. I'll be. I'll be busy doing. Just. Just walking on water around him. That's what I plan on doing. I, I, decision, submission, knockout. I don't know. That's. That's not for me. That's not for me to to predict. That's like the odds makers and all that, isn't it? But I think. Uh, I think it'll be a good fight. I, I hope it's a good fight, but we'll see. We'll see. Well, how do I'm you trying. Find I the... don't want to be. Go on. Sorry. Go on. Like no, I'm trying to say. What I was going to say then is, is I don't want to be like. There's no fabricated arrogance by me. Like if I say something, I mean it. So, oh, it, can he take the power? Like what a fucking silly thing to say. If I hit him and he and, and I knock him out, happy days. But let's hope he, he's a trained professional fighter. So it, let's. We'll, what will be will be, won't it? You know, um, I got not a bad word to say about him. He's a family man. Uh, he's tries his best. He's he's had like twice as many professional fights as I have. Uh, he's got a yeah. Well done for taking the fight, mate. But he, I'm pretty sure he asked for it. So. How are you finding the cuts to 170? Because, I mean, obviously you were cutting to, to 155 and obviously doing yourself a bit of damage by doing that. Mm. Do, do you have to cut much to get to 170 or is it quite an easygoing thing? I'm still, I, I go from about, like my natural weight's about 88. If I'm just training hard, not watching my specific meals, I'm about 88, so... It's still 11 kilos off, which would probably make you think, why the fuck would you do lightweight in the first place? But that was just that competitor in me. I wanted to, I thought, while I'm 21 now, I'm going to give this a crack. But yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's still, it's a nice cut because I'm fueled. I, eat, I try and eat clean all year round. I'm, yeah. I'm, a, I'm in good shape all year. I never let myself go. So it's a nice steady cut. It's a nice cut. The last one was, was a breeze. I, I, I made weight on the treadmill. Usually yeah. you do a run and then you jump in the, the hot bath. But I made weight on the treadmill, so... Hopefully, it's a bit more of that this time. And you don't feel at all like undersized at all for the division. You feel no. strong and good in that position there. I was just some massive. I was just dreaming trying to get down the lightweight. I'm I'm a I'm a big, full blooded welterweight mate. You know, look at yeah. they don't get much big, bigger than McManus, but you see, you saw I was throwing him around. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, I don't feel. I train. I've always trained with the bigger boys. I'm a big. I've fought did all my amateur fights up well the weight. I've always been a well the weight. I just had a little experiment at 155. So it, for me, this this weight class is perfect. One of the things that we we, we like to always ask fighters as well is is your process when you when you're in that room before you get the call to walk out to the octagon. Okay. Uh, what what what's I mean? You don't have to tell us this. Obviously, a lot of, you know. I guess a lot of fighters want to keep that kind of. Uh, to themselves but if you're happy to talk about it just wonder what the process is that you know that you go through before you get that 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 shout that right you're up um i send carl out to my car he drains the petrol from the tank and i dip my hands in it for an hour beforehand <laughs> and then uh they call me i take the hands out the petrol put the gloves on and we go out I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, At first, I was um, like, "What's he getting from the car?" And as soon as you decide, oh, we just get, far, oh, we just like get a fucking Nando's out the car. No, <laughs> no, no. Right. Um. Ah, uh, I was hoping that I not. I was trying to get you to not laugh. Then. Um. But, mate, I just I'm sat. We get there. I put my bag on the floor. But might lie on the bag. Dick around for a bit. I try and get my hand wraps as late as possible. Because uh, eight. You know, fanning around in the wraps. Just get the glow. It pads nice and light. Have a little move about. Chuck a bit of music on. Might put uh, chuck a bit of Oasis on, maybe bit of um, whatever. A bit of Adele, rolling in the deep. Hello, so if you listen to them, um, chuck a bit of that on. <laughs> Pretty laid back. I might get a bit fired up and start breathing heavy. I don't know, mate. Look, we do this every. We do, I've done. I've done this my whole life. And before I walk out, I'm thinking, right now, let's fucking show the world what I can do. Uh, yeah. There's, there's not much. It's not like some magical ritual behind it. I'm, I'm pretty. I treat fight day like another day. I don't know if that's a bit psychotic or whatever, but of course, there's mm -hmm. that that the anticipations there. 
but I'm I'm very much just I don't know re- I'm subdued, relaxed, but I'm switched on. Like I'm relaxed to the point where I'm not gonna I'm not bouncing around like a lunatic. But then if my opponent tapped me on the shoulder in the corridor and it was and the fight was gonna happen, I'd be ready to fight there there and then. Yeah. I think so. Uh, yeah, it's it's a, it's a pretty. There is no ritual. It changes all the time. Mm. I try and laugh as much as possible and, and yeah, just relax. And what, after the fight, what's your, what's your go-to meal after the fight? What's, what's the thing the that you've been craving during the wake up? You're like, I can't wait to get to this. Mate, it's probably a, it's probably a beer, probably yeah. a pint. It's probably a pint. Yeah. Cause I've, I've usually, I've usually satisfied the cravings with the refuel. You kind of go off yeah. any sugary, crazy treats. I'm not much of a cake guy. Like, I love sweets. I'll smash a load of sweets in, Percy Pigs and Haribo's and God knows what else, and pick and mix. Go in a cinema, I'll rinse the pick and mix out. But um, it's probably a pint with the boys after. Yeah. Lovely. Nice. Well, I'm not yeah. clucking like, oh, mate, I need a, a beer. But that's just the, probably the one thing that's kind of, because you haven't, I haven't drank for so long. I just think, oh, go on, have a beer. That's it's usually a fun one, you know? Lovely. Lovely. Mm. Well, look, we know we've took up uh, a load of your time. You know, we didn't expect you to get told off uh, by the teacher uh, at the school. Oh, no, uh, I know, um... mate. I thought them days were behind me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought them days were behind me, man. <laughs> I left Mate. school like seven years ago, still getting a bollock in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mate, we've had an absolute joy talking to you, mate. Um, I hope you have, because I've, I've enjoyed talking to you. I've, I follow your podcast, boys. I always have done. Um, it's an honour to be asked to come on here. Uh, yeah, fa- love it. Big, massive fan of, fan of your work, both of you. Oh, well, mate, honestly, we, we really, really appreciate that. And it has genuinely been an absolute joy talking to you. You've got, you know, a, an incredible story. And I think you're an inspiration to, to, to a lot of people out of there. I, I don't, I don't want to keep banging on about it. But as I said earlier, I, hey, I, mate, I you, think you're an inspiration. You're not, I honestly, I've spoken to you boys like I'd speak to if we were in a, in a pub or something. I've just, I've just been real with you. Um, like this fight has kind of sold itself. I can't, I've never been able to put an act on I've always just kind of said what's on my mind if I wanted to say something mad or rattle off a Hulk Hogan quote in an interview <laughs> or rattle off a Chael Sonnen thing here um, I'll, I'll do it but you boys have just been it's like I've it's like I knew you it's the first time we haven't even met but it's like the first time I've ever come across you so it's been a pleasure boys honestly and oh, it, the, your kind words about my story I try and be as humble about my story as possible I'm sure there's people who've gone through a lot worse I'm just doing my best to I'm just trying to be the best person I can and make my my family proud. That that's about that's about it for me. All this fame, money, and glory is nothing, you know. Yeah. Well, I, I'm certain your family must be incredibly proud of you, babe. Absolutely. But just both in the octagon and outside of it as well, you seem like a, a, a top bloke, and uh, we will be rooting for you at Absolutely. Cage Warriors 131 against Medaz Flaminas. And best of luck to you, mate. Thank you, mate. Can I leave you with one final thing, gentlemen? Please do. Never trust a gangster. (laughs) (laughs) And he's hung up. (laughs) Amazing. (laughs) Oh, I really hope he's being told off now by the teacher. (laughs) Oh, that was brilliant. The the, the classic Chael Sonnen, which we didn't actually ask him about. Oh, he's brilliant. That was brilliant. (laughs) We thought you were gone. We thought nah, he's gone. Back. He's back. He's we didn't back. ask you. We didn't ask you. We want to know what what's what's the deal with Chow? Has Chow said something about you? Oh, Chow knows, man. Chow knows. He um going back about nine years ago now. He he uh he told me to chase my dreams, and I did exactly that. Here, here we are. We're on the way up. He told me to ch- chase my dreams on Twitter, and and he he's watching every step I take according to him. So love it. Chow knows, boys. Chael knows. Well, we all know <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah. Now that you've been on the show, we all know yes. and we'll be knowing after Saturday. No, what is Friday the 10th is your Friday fight. Friday the 10th it? of December. Cage Warriors 131, live and only on UFC Fight Pass. Look at that. He does his own promos and everything. <laughs> what can't he do? <laughs> what can't he do? 
Oh, I, I can't answer that. But I've answered every question you you've thrown at me, but what can't he do? That, that is one I definitely can't answer. I just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it's been an absolute pre- pleasure. We are going to press stop now. <laughs> yes. It's been such a joy, mate. Thank you very stop, much. Man. Of course. Stop, man. Cheers, boys.